as I said, saying something racist doesn't get you put beyond the pale. It's actually part of the discourse. So uh, recently on Israeli television, we had this series, this commercial, in which it was a riff off of Netanyahu's comment about them going to the polls in droves. So this is how they pictured it. Remember what Netanyahu said on election day? And there's a faux accent, right? We will defeat them. Now we are the majority because we are allowed to vote. Because Palestinians, because Arab citizens of Israel and citizens of Jerusalem can vote, because of that, they will become the leaders of the, here in this case, the mayor of Jerusalem. So now the mayor of Jerusalem is Arab, so his secretary is bringing him coffee and she has a hijab because she's Arab. So this is how they try to scare Israeli Jews with the prospect of Arabs merely exercising their franchise to vote. The mere right to vote. And who is conducting this campaign? Who's paying for it? Who's promoting it? None other than these former members of Knesset, all from the Labour Party. The so-called opposition, the so-called liberal Zionists, the, those who want the two-state solution, the segregationists, we should understand there's no such thing as separate but equal. You learned this already in America decades ago. They want separation, but there's no such thing as separate but equal. Now, even, yes, former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak from the Labour Party went on record this year saying that Israel has been infected by the seeds of fascism. And it's just the beginning, he says. Great. Glad you said something. But until just a few years ago, you were in Netanyahu's government. You were his defense minister. You were enforcing his policies. You were putting them into practice. And yes, you know, recently Bougie Herzog, the leader, the current leader of the Labour Party, leader of the opposition, he also said that the legislation that the government is passing is indicative, more than anything, of the budding fascism creeping into Israeli society. Bokir Tov, I'm glad you, you know, decided to say something, but until five minutes ago, you were begging Netanyahu to get into his government. You want to be his foreign minister. You want to do his Hasbara. You want to explain away his apartheid to the world. So, what's his rhetoric? With Bibi and Bennett, we will remain stuck with the Palestinians forever. We have the ability to change the situation in the country, he says, without giving the impression that we're Arab lovers. We want to be elected, but is there a way we can get elected without giving off the vibe that we don't hate Arabs? We want that racist vote. <laughs> we want the racist Jews to vote for us too. We don't want the racist Jews to only vote for Netanyahu. Let some of those racist Jews, those supremacist Jews vote for us. We don't want to give off this vibe that we don't hate Arabs. Let's kind of, you know, make that, you know, put that, you know, sweep that under the rug so people get the impression that maybe we also hate Arabs just as much as the Likud. With regard to security, I am more extreme than Netanyahu. He wants to flank him on the right. This is the centrists in Israel. You need to understand the Likud, the labor, they're not so different, okay? So one of them, the Likud, wants to separate Jews and Arabs with legal means by making two different legal statuses. So the Labour Party wants to separate them by physical means, by putting them in separate territories. It's the same overriding racist ideology. And again, it's not only the Knesset, and it's coming home to roost. So those that say, oh, well, Bougie Herzog, the Labour Party, the Liberal Zionists, they just want to create an Arab state in the West Bank and a Jewish state in, in the rest of Israel, but that's not the situation because that racism comes home to roost. Moti Dotan, the regional governor of the Lower Galilee, he says that no Arabs can swim in their swimming pools in the Jewish towns and villages in the Galilee. He refuses to allow Palestinian people, citizens of Israel, to come and use his pools. Why? He says their culture of cleanliness isn't the same as ours. Until just a couple years ago, this man was a lifelong member of the Labour Party. This is the so-called liberal Zionist we hear about. They don't want Jews and Arabs in the same pool. And it's not only in the north of the country. You go down to the, oh, why is, why is that racist? Okay, and it's not just, an, I should also point out, the Lower Galilee, these are their sister cities. These are their twin towns. Are these shared values with Atlanta, Detroit, St. Louis, Tulsa, and Great Neck? It's not only the north of the country. Go down to the south of the country, the city of Yerucham, and you find the same thing. Their public pools, they don't allow Arabs to swim in them. 
And again, we're talking about a city with sister city of Miami, Florida, and Highland Park, Illinois. I'd be curious to hear what their uh, you know, leaders have to say about this. And, of and uh, again, this is a labor, a, party, a member of the Labor Party. The mayor is a member of the Labor Party, the so-called liberal Zionists. So this is the labor's racism coming back home to roost. It's not only about separating Jews and Palestinians in the West Bank, it's also about separating them even in so-called, you know, Israel proper. And of course, with that kind of racism, is it any wonder that it continues, not just the north and the south, but also on the coastal plains. In the center of the country, in the town of Rishon Lezion, this city councilor wants to separate Jews and Arabs at the beach. He doesn't want Arabs coming to the same beaches as Jews, saying, uh, the Arabs, they get enraged in a second, and for them, stabbings are no big deal. They have sentiments for no one. This is the kind of, this is the kind of racism that we regularly read about on a daily basis in our news headlines. Somehow, <coughs> they don't quite make it to CNN or NBC. Now, it's gotten to the point where the Knesset itself, I mean, some of you have seen these photos before. This is a picture of Israel's parliament, and this, in the backdrop behind the speaker's podium is a, a sculpture, a facade, created by an Israeli artist. It's very iconic. I'm sure some of you have seen this photo before. The artist who created that, and just like a few months ago, he was, he's be, it's gotten to the point where he's so ashamed of Israeli political culture that he's asked for it to be taken down. <laughs> he says, I'm ashamed that I made it, and I've asked a number of times that it be moved or covered with a tapestry. That's the point we're at now. Now, we talked a, I just talked a little bit about the segregation camp, you know, but the truth is that even that liberal Zionist racism that we see isn't enough for Israelis anymore. It's declining in popularity when you pair off the segregation candidate versus the domination candidate. Bougie versus Bibi, and we pair off Bennett versus Bibi, the elimination candidate, we find that more Israelis prefer the latter. They don't want their washed-down racism, they want the real deal. So in, when they pair them off, Bougie only gets 25% of the vote to Netanyahu's 56, but Bennett, the far-right candidate, gets 29% to Bibi's 40. All right? The elimination camp is growing in power in Israel. 